And I'm here today to talk about the edge of the six day kid blanket. Um, earlier this week, my friend Courtney and I did a little collab and we released uh, Hi Jenny, so good to see you, my love. Um, we did a little project together. Um, she did a, a little um, groomy uh, bunny to go on top of um, the beginning of a six day star blanket and you can make a little lovey with that. And so I hope everyone will um, check out Goth Fairies Creations new Etsy store and buy her bunny lovey pattern. Hello, Azwari Bala. Good to see you. Hi, Kathy. Um, yeah, and then, so all six day kid blankets use the same stitches. I'll just say that, but there are multiple ways to make them. And, and there are some of us that can take my silly old pattern <laughs> that I made and do all kinds of wonderful things with it. And then there are other people that want the exact instructions. They want to be told how many to chain, what yarn to use, what colors, exactly how much yarn they're gonna need. How do you do the edge? Like they want the exact instructions. So for those people that have been emailing me for years about this viral six day kid blanket photo that went viral a few years ago. Hi Renee, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Hi Linda, oh, you're so kind. It's just a little bit of lip gloss, really, that's all. And I got my hair cut. I had my hair. I, I got a lot cut off my hair. <laughs> it was really getting on my nerves, but yeah. So, um, so I finally did that, wrote that all down, that viral photo blanket for you. And, and so that's what Courtney and I did together. We released that this week. So I hope you like it. If you don't want to buy it, it's free on my website. If you want the charts, I did some new charts. I corrected some little mistakes that were on my old charts. And I also, um, oh, you're so kind. Um, I also charted out the um, the square off, the straight start and the square off edge. So if you wanna pay 10 bucks for the premium pattern, you will have that chart that has the square off the bottom, straight start bottom and the squared off top. So there you go. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I'm always like doing these things for you. Um, but, you know, they're always like all over the place and all these, you know, you've got to kind of dig around to find my stuff. So I'm getting a little bit more organized for you all um, slowly but surely. But things are things are going well. Some people on uh, in the group this week were asking about edging how i do the edging and how i weave in ends so i thought i would um come on and show a few things that have been going around in the group hey lorraine i feel like i haven't seen anyone everyone in forever because i haven't been coming on live every week like i used to and hey courtney there she is so everyone um, check out Courtney's Bunny Lovey. It was a great collab. I think it went really well. Um, yeah, okay. So let's see, what, what am I doing here? I think I have even changed this pattern a little bit since I made this. Um, Oh, and hopefully tonight I put it in the title. I'm going to show you how to do that. You know that picture that um, the lady that did this viral blanket posted where she had um, she had four rows and her 
crochet hook going through all four rows of the border edge and the swan scissors sitting there. And man, I have seen that picture on everything. Like I've seen it on phone covers, phone cases. Um, we saw that like, I, I've seen that everywhere. Like so many even weird places. We saw it, it went, <laughs> you know, when people see my stuff being like thieved out there as content theft, they send it to me. So we found this thing, somebody did, and they sent it to me and it was basically a Snuggie. And it had that, the viral photo of the six day kid blanket, the green one, just like this, but it was printed onto the fabric. And it was like a big Snuggie made out. It's just the weirdest thing. It's so weird. What a weird thing to like go viral. But okay, let me switch this. Swap cameras. Okay, so here we are. We're on the last row after we've squared off. So I'm working on edge tonight. And I'm working on, I'm going to show some of y'all were asking about how to weave ends. And, um, and, and look, if you're in the six day kid blanket group, I mean, I know there are people that love Magic Knot, but I do not. I do not support Magic Knot. That's that's just me. That is going to come. That can. I'm not going to say it is going to come undone, but it can come undone. And no matter how tight you pull it, it that's not what keeps it from coming undone. So I won't talk about that too much more, but I will show you how I do this, what I do with this. So. Okay, so I'm on the last, what row is this? Let me pull up my pattern. I'm like all over the place when I talk to. So this is top edge row four. So, and it's a single crochet across the edge. And then when you get to that very last stitch, you do three single crochet into it. You have had, you have had it come undone, Courtney? Okay. That and the and the magic loop um, starting magic loop is great for amigurumi, but it is not great for like a star blanket. It's just not sturdy enough, and then that comes undone, and there's there's no way to fix it. So nobody hates. I say this all the time. No one hates weaving it ends more than I do. I have projects. Y'all know my hexagon blanket, that thing is like 10 years old and it still has ends hanging on it because I just put it on the couch and nobody ever knows. Okay, let me try and stay on task here. All right, so in that last stitch, you do three and then you just start going down the side and you want this first round to match the top and bottom. So what happens with this variation if you change colors along with the pattern repeats you'll end up in a little bit of the jam of a jam when you get to the top of your blanket because there's an extra half a repeat at the top so or there's supposed to be so what do you do with that if you're changing on the repeat and you're making stripes you know and you want them to be even so I have that. There are a lot of little details in this pattern. I know people are probably like, how is this any different? It's really not, but it has the details, it has all the little details. And they're pretty nice details, if you ask me. You know me, I'm, I like things to wrap up neatly in a neat little tidy, tidy way. I like tidy. The rainbow granny stripe. I've had to tie knots and it, oh, yeah, I mean, that's the thing about, um, about it. Okay, I have ends here. And what I do with the end of, um, at the end when I'm changing to a new color, and you can watch me do it on the original swatch videos, the row by row, is I pull the la a new color through the last two loops and then I flip the ends, the tails up over the working yarn and they stay like this. And this, I haven't tied any knots or anything. And this has been sitting in a basket for, oh goodness gracious, knows how long, months. And they're still fine. They haven't come undone. And there's 
there's no knots that have been tied here. Okay, I just tucked it into the working yarn. So what I will do is I will leave these and leave them in after I complete my edge. So I'm going to take the green up towards the color, you know, each color towards the color it matches. And I'm going to work over that tail for like one stitch. That's it. I'm not going to work over it a bunch because, hey, guess what? I have had the terrible experience of working over ends and having them come out. So I'm just going to go over one. I'm just going to get it going in the direction where I'm eventually going to weave it in. And then this, this tail, I'm going to bring this way and I'm just going to make one stitch over it. And then to work this row of single crochet, you'll be able to see it better now that I'm on the white. I go under two threads and I leave one on the bottom. I leave one thread. I treat these turning chains like a starting chain. And I work down my edge like that. I don't work into the spaces. Some people like to work into the holes. I, I don't, that bunch is up for me. I'm also a person who likes to chain four instead of three when I turn. So I'm going to be setting this down and checking the tension from time to time just to make sure it's not ruffling. It is ruffling a little bit, see that? So I don't need to go into every single stitch. I can skip here and there so that it lays flat, but it's only ruffling a tiny bit. I'm just going to do better from here on. I'm not going to go back. And there's no, um, there's no real formula. Trust yourself. We have a lot of new crocheters in the group right now, and they're doing so well. They're very bravely tackling the six day kid blanket as noobs, which I think is awesome. We're here for you. We're here for you, noobs. Do what we say, make your swatch. Whoops. This yarn is Stylecraft Special DK, and it's lovely to work with. It's really nice. Okay, I'm at a color change again. Let me get a, the white going this way, green going that way. Let me get under two threads and not just one. Ah, oh, heck. There we go. I feel like I almost, almost could use a little bit smaller hook for this. See if I can go a little faster. Actually, I don't have to go all the way around to show you how to do the, how to do the border all four at once. Every edge I do for every six day kid blanket starts with a single crochet row like this around the edge. If I squared it off, I do three single crochet in each corner. If I didn't, I'm just a giant fly buzzing me. If I didn't square off and I left the top and the bottom of the blanket um, chevron, chevron style, pointy, oh, come on. Um, then I will put three single crochet in each mountain and I might just depending, I might skip one or two in the valley. I cannot get my hook into this stitch. Come on now. Okay, I'm gonna have to go like this. Here we go. 
And then I have that end there and I'm just gonna bring it up and over and just work over it one time. Yeah, you have to increase in the points and you have to decrease in the valleys. Otherwise you're gonna flatten out your chevrons and it'll ruffle and it won't look right. And just depending on what kind of um, border you choose to do, you know, you might have to, you might have to play with that a little bit, but in general, in general, I would say three in the points and skip one or two in the valleys. And always, 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 always lay it down and check it and see if it's flat. Like I should lay this guy down. Yeah, see I'm ruffling a little bit because I'm putting too many stitches in. So I should, um, I should skip. I should have skipped around here a little bit. I said I would do better and I didn't, I failed. Okay, here we are at that end again. Okay. I'm not gonna go all the way around cause I'm bored. Let me check and see what I did on the, yes, okay. So from top edge, row four, single crochet across, and then you single crochet down the side, across the bottom, and up the other side. And then three, single crochet in the corner. And I'll just go across the bottom too, because this will be easy. When I um, when I work my single crochet row for my blanket, I usually go under. What do I do? I go under one, I think. Oh gosh, I don't even know now. I go under one stitch or two, one thread or two. If you went under, it feels like I have two left. So if you went under one on your first round, you're gonna have two threads here to go under. If you went under two, you're only gonna have one. It doesn't really matter. It's interesting, this yarn, it looks blue on my screen, but it's completely green. Oh my gosh, that is a gigantic fly. It's getting busy out on my street again. The bar next door is opening again soon. I saw my landlord yesterday. Okay, I'm just going to go that far for now so I can do the edge. And let me just cut this so if I want to come back and go all the way around someday, I can. Okay, just I just only have that one edge to go. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how she does all four rounds at once. And I'm just going to say I would never do this because... Hi, Mary, because I would go all the way around and then finish it off. And then I would turn the work and I would start the next row in a different place and finish it off and then turn the work and start in a different place. And that way you don't have four round, four sets of ends right in the same spot that you need to, um, that you need to 
weave in, right? I would stagger them. Okay, so here we go. Quarter round one, we're continuing with color A and we're going to half double crochet around. So here's how you do a standing half double crochet. You put a slip knot on your hook, you yarn over and you have to hold, kind of hold that in place on the, on the, um, on the hook and then you pull through all three. Okay, so you don't have to, you don't have to attach with a slip stitch and then chain up and then half double crochet. You can just start from up and go down. You don't have to start down and go up. Okay, so then that first round will be a round of half double crochet around the, all the way around the work, okay? But let me show you what happened on that photo, okay? She went about this far, and then she took her hook out of the work, and then she started another round. Okay. Half double crochet, but it's it's camel stitch. So half double crochet in the third loop. So this is the front loop. This is the back loop. And if you go back here, that's the third loop right there. I'm not going to start on the first stitch. That'll drive me crazy. I'm going to start right there. Okay, so third loop, half double crochet. Okay, and then she, uh, I should do a few more. And she said she does this because it feels like it's making the, the edge go faster for her. So she does a few stitches of this row, and then she does a few stitches of the next row, a few stitches of the next row, etc. When you work in the third loop, it folds that top, the top of the stitch folds forward. And that's how you get that really cool, almost knitted look, almost stockinette look. Okay. And then she started a third row. Let me find the end of my yarn here. Hi, Facebook user. Oh, I guess I should keep my eye over on YouTube and see what's happening over there. Okay, see what's happening. Hi, Ling Su Lee. Hello, thank you very much, Leanne. Leanne says, six day kid is my go-to for a quick, beautiful blanket. Thank you so much. Hey, Shauna, 
it's so good to see you, my dear. Shauna, my tester, I, I swear, you must be the fastest crocheter on the planet. She'll be like, there's a problem with this pattern. I'm like, let me look at it. Okay, let me go make another one while you're doing that. Before I even get around to making a, their correction, she already has another one made. <laughs> I'm so glad I have you. I have great people helping me. Okay, and then here's the fourth row. Okay, do y'all see what's happening here? What do you think of this? And then she went like this. And she put the hook and she tightened up all four rows. Okay, she made the strings really nice. These were hidden, of course. And then she put the scissors there. <laughs> These crappy plastic scissors. I have no idea where my swan scissors are. I bought some just so I could make this video and now I don't know where they are. But do you see what's happening there? She's not she's not going like i mean maybe she's leaving those three on i guess you could leave them on the hook i mean you'd have to take that one out i don't see how you would do it otherwise she does a few stitches of each row and it makes her feel like she's getting her border done faster. Any questions? Oops. Honestly, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be my choice because I would I don't like to start all my rows in the same place when I'm changing colors. I would have each one of these starts on a different side of the blanket and then it just hides it just hides them better. But I mean, I guess I guess I could see why it might be fun to do all four at once. I think the picture's cool. But people ask me, people email me all the time, please show me how to do that border. And it's really only four rows of camel stitch. They're not worked all at once. Okay, and then let's see, am I at the center stitch? So I, when I get to the center stitch on these half double crochet rounds, I actually do three double crochet both loops. I don't do third loop on that corner. Just gives the corner a little decoration. That's my detail. Oh, this is the first row. There's those details I'm talking about. In fact, this is the same edge I used on the baby blanket, the gender neutral 
blanket. I did the same border, camel stitch border. Uh, but, and then I did a spiky edge. And this one I just did a little lacy edge. Yeah, Teresa, I'm I'm with you. It's not I don't I don't enjoy it. But I get what she's saying that like you would go all the way around and the whole thing would be done. But it's not I'm not finding it fun. <laughs> But I did want to show it. I did want to make a tutorial about it because I get emails and people ask in the group as well. No, the, um, so Mary's question is the three in the corner, are they done in the back stitch? No, I do three double crochet um, into the center stitch. Now this, this third loop of the double crochet is a tiny bit awkward, that first one on the side, but it just makes it like pop out a little bit. That's the only corners you have to deal with on this one because it has the squared off top and bottom. So you don't have to worry about increasing and decreasing. What happened right there? Oh, I should have skipped a little bit. I should have laid it down. Yeah, this one you have to look for the third loop of the um, double crochet, but it has one. It has one. You'll find it. I have a little split there. Oops. Woohoo! Hey, Courtney, don't forget to check that whirlette for me. If that's the story you're going to watermelon catastrophe or something. <laughs> Have fun, Courtney. Tell everyone I said hey. Tell everyone I said good day. Hi, Sarah. We got the Aussies here tonight. Of course, it's morning for y'all, right? It's what time is it? Oh, it's almost nine. I kept saying to people, I'll be live later today. I'll be live later today. I'll be live later today. 
and then it turned into nine, eight thirty, I think, almost nine o'clock before it actually gone on. Okay. Okay, let me clip this. Normally, you'd, you know, you'd be going all the way around and joining with a slip stitch, but of course I didn't go all the way around. Oops, uh-oh, well, what did I just cut? Okay, there we go. All right, I'll show you this final border round and then I'll show you how I would weave those ends. Okay, it says chain one, but I'm already, I, I, I didn't do it the way that it's written. So I'm gonna start with a single crochet chain two, single crochet in the same stitch. It's just a little pico edge. And then you skip to one, two, and then you do that again. Chain two, single crochet, skip two, chain two, oh, I'm sorry, single crochet, chain two, single crochet. You know, it doesn't say this on the pattern. I think this is a draft I'm looking at, but I think you're supposed to do it in the third loop. If it doesn't say to do that, I'll, I should change it because it will look better. Single crochet, chain two, single crochet, third loop. Skip two, one, two, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, skip two, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, and then what it, does it say what to do in the corner? It says adjust the number of stitches skipped so that the single crochet, chain two, single crochet lands in the corners of the blanket. Okay, I'm gonna do that one through both loops. So I didn't skip at all because I was right there. Let me move over a little bit so I'm not behind my pop. Yeah. Picture in picture. Skip two. I'm only skipping one. Okay, and that's your that's your final border round. Simple, goes quick.
is a very, um, it's just a very dainty edge. Well, let me check. Somebody can check and tell me if I said to do it in the third loop. I remember the testers asking me, should I do it in the third loop or not? And I think I said, try it both ways. And I don't remember what I, what we settled on. Okay, let me snip this. And then, oh, 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 do I have a needle to weave in ends with? There we go. Let's see, I think I left one over right here. Yep. Oof. Hallelujah. Okay, so when I worked over these guys, they ended up in the back on the wrong side. You know, your border, unless you unless you um, turn it back and forth, it's going to have a right side and a wrong side. So this is the wrong side of it. I have a lot of stuff attached here because I did that. I feel like I'm cutting spaghetti. Let me get out of here. This is the wrong side. The wrong side's actually pretty. <laughs> this is the right side. Okay, so when I was going up that side, and then I went like one stitch over these guys. Remember these guys? And I got them going in the direction of the color that they match. So this thread was going that way and now I'm gonna make it go back this way. And I usually, I try and stay right around this color of yarn that matches whatever I'm weaving in because I don't want it to show, right? And then you want it to change directions at least once. Um, okay, so I'm going this way. Let me keep going this way. Last round is not in the third loop, okay. I think some of us didn't and others didn't. I like when there's a single crochet row and I just go underneath those guys. And I probably should have a little bit smaller yarn needle than what I'm using here. But and on one or two stitches, split the stitch, split the yarn. That way, if it starts to unravel, it won't be able to unravel right there. So that one went, that went a really far away. That was all the way down here. And I went up and across. Okay, and now I'm gonna snip it. and you cannot see it at all. And if anything should happen, any kind of disaster should happen in the washing machine or something, and that comes out, which it never will, or let's just say it worms out a little bit because it's been used a lot or washed and dried in the dryer. I don't generally put things in the dryer. Um, I will maybe air tumble them a little, for a little bit just so they're not, too moist but I spin them really well and then I lay them out but if it's put in the dryer it might warm out a little bit but then you'll have a little bit to trim off okay and then this one I love a single crochet row because I'll, I'll go right under those guys
Okay, and then I, I, I like to kind of follow the yarn and I'm gonna go back and forth. I'm not always gonna go in the same direction. I'm gonna make my yarn change directions. I'm gonna do a little bit more. It doesn't feel like long enough. It's like to have two or three inches of yarn hiding in the work in case it comes undone. Then I'll have a little, I'll have something there to sew it up with. And also, and I'm back to a single crochet row. I'm gonna go under these guys. Nobody will ever know. It was there. Okay, make sure you haven't pulled it really tight and puckered it. Hi, Mary. Okay, there you go. That's how I weave in ends, and that is how you do all four rounds of the six day viral kid blanket at once. Mystery is solved. I'll set it up again. Well, this row wouldn't be there yet, but we'll just pretend. Whoop. There we go. A viral photo is born. <laughs> oh, I'm glad that's helpful, Teresa. remember what kind of hook she had, but I remember she had the swan scissors. All right, everyone. If you have any more questions, just ask them on my page or in the six day blanket group. And make sure if you're watching on YouTube or wherever you're watching and joining me, make sure you um, buy Lorraine. Make sure you like, subscribe, you do all those good things. Click the bell to get notifications so you always know when I'm here. And um, thank you for being here. Let me play my music. Shauna, can you show how you do that real quick? I just did it. I just showed it. You have to watch the replay. Bye now. <laughs>